Okay, welcome back. Season ticket college football podcast rolling ahead in week seven. Week seven already, man. It's just about half over. But it's just getting good. Finally, a week full of good matchups. There's, I mean, I had trouble picking my 10 biggest games this week. There's so many good ones. I had to leave a couple out. Tonight, I am sitting here watching NC State and Syracuse. Syracuse not looking good so far. Andre Schmidt just missed a field goal. I didn't even know you could do that. Banked one off the uh, off the left upright going into the half. It's halftime right now. It's 13 to nothing, NC State. They look good. They got Torrey Holt back in the house. Got uh, a couple other alumni there. They're showing out, and they're playing well so far against Syracuse, but Syracuse is also not that good. Anyway, this is the episode we're breaking down this weekend's matchups, the top 10 matchups of the week starting right now. I'm going to get in right into it. Let's see. There's a couple Friday night games, Miami, Virginia, and Oregon, Colorado. Oregon is 21-point favorites against Colorado at home. They're four and one. Colorado's three and two. I think Oregon's going to dominate in that one. And then Miami, Virginia, at, uh, in Miami, Virginia is actually underdogs there. I think Virginia's going to win that one too. Neither of those are in my top ten. I had to leave them out, but I had to talk about them. But we're going to roll ahead into the Saturday slate because, dude, it's lit. All right, first game of the day, big noon kickoff, big noon Saturday. Oklahoma, Texas. Now, Oklahoma's defense is a lot better than they were last year at this time this year. And Texas is a lot better, I think, last year than they uh, – they're a lot better now than they were last year is what I'm trying to say. This is going to be a high-scoring game. Oklahoma's coming into this as 10.5-point favorites. The over-under is 75.5. In the Cotton Bowl, Red River rivalry, first game of the day. I'm excited for it. I think Oklahoma is just going to be too much offensively. Again, their defense is good, but I still think Texas will be able to score. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. 48-41 to 41 is what I have for Oklahoma. Jalen Hurts is not going to be stopped. Texas' defense showed against LSU. They're not that good. They have injuries. They're not DBU. They're going to need some help from their offense and Sam Ellinger and maybe a couple – mistakes I don't even want to call them turnovers from for Texas's defense because I don't think they can get a turnover against Jalen Hurts they're going to need something to happen some freak play to maybe get a turnover unforced turnover I should say Oklahoma's going to win this one though 48 41 look for a high scoring game there Alabama Texas A&M at 230 330 Eastern College Station Texas on CBS Alabama's 17 point favorites I mean as they should be I mean it's at A&M but I mean I I just just, I just don't think A&M with Kellen Mond not playing as well as he has in past this year I just don't think that he is going to be able to get it done against Alabama I think they can score a few points Alabama's defense has got some injuries they've been giving up points all year but you've seen the offense they're coming off a bye they're going to dominate Texas A&M Tua is going to throw six touchdowns and I have them winning 42 to 27 I think all six touchdowns they score are going to be touchdown passes I think they easily cover this spread. I have them winning by, what is this, 25 points? No, that's not right. I have them winning by 15 points. They don't don't cover the spread then. (laughs) My math was a little off there. Alabama still, this is going to be a fun game. I think it's going to, it's just always fun to watch them go out and just dominate. And this is it. This is their time to beat a premier program. They haven't really done that this year yet. Their best win is, what, Ole Miss, South Carolina, Duke. This is their first big test. They got a couple of big games coming after this one, too. You got LSU uh, looking ahead. So take care of business here. 
against A&M, Alabama's going to get it done. Another interesting game, Florida State-Clemson. This game is also at 3.30 Eastern. It's on ABC. Florida State gives up 300 yards, over 300 yards a game through the air. And Trevor Lawrence has not been performing. His last game coming off a bye this week, his last game was North Carolina. We all saw how that one went. Pretty slow game on both sides of the ball, really. It was a low-scoring game. Trevor Lawrence just didn't get anything really going until that touchdown pass to T. Higgins. I think this is the week that Trevor Lawrence gets back on track. They're at home. They're playing a bad Florida State defense. Not to mention Florida State can't really score without uh, Cam Akers. I think Cam Akers is an unbelievable talent. He's just in a bad situation at Florida State. Clemson is 27-point favorites in this one. The over-under set at 59, and uh, they're going to cover the spread. It's just going to be too much. I have them winning by... What what do I have winning by here? 32 points, 45 to 13. I think this is a back-on-track game for Clemson. They're going to get it together. I like Trevor Lawrence to throw for three touchdowns, 300 yards at least. Get back on track. Show the country who the defending champs are. They didn't do it last time they were out. They need to reprove that as now they drop to number two in the country behind Alabama. Deservingly so. I don't think they are the number one team in the country, but they are the defending champs. Let's show the country who this Clemson team really is. Go out and beat Florida State down, 45-13. Michigan State plays Wisconsin. Guess where that game is played? Madison, just like every single other one of their games. It's absolutely ridiculous. Madison, or Wisconsin is playing every one of their games in Madison. I'm going to pull up this schedule just to to read this off it's just stupid they're playing every game at home they're winning every game obviously i mean it's probably wouldn't change much if they were playing on the road but let's see they played at usf week one at home against central michigan at home against michigan at home against northwestern at home against kent state at home against michigan state they finally have two buys in the next two weeks illinois and ohio state that ohio state one's gonna be tough at home against Iowa, at home against Purdue, and then they have Nebraska and Minnesota away. So their away schedule, with the exception of Ohio State, is a joke. They're going to, yeah, eh, it's ridiculous. But they are playing Michigan State at home this week. They're 10.5 point favorites. Over unders at 40.5. I'm tempted to take the under here. I think Michigan State's defense is going to have some sort of answer for Jonathan Taylor. They were able to slow down Ohio State a little bit last week, but Ohio State was just too multidimensional for Michigan State. Wisconsin does not have that. Wisconsin is a run-the-football team, and Michigan State knows that, and I think they're going to go into this game just like Northwestern did and just all-out stop the run. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm locking up the under here. Talked myself into it. Let's write this down. Locked up the under. I have Wisconsin winning this game 27-13. I think it's going to be a rock fight, so to speak. It's on Big Ten Network at 3.30. Wisconsin just doesn't have anything except the run game. As soon as Michigan State gets out there and and gets stops, Jack Cohn's going to try to throw, and he's not going to be able to do it, not only because he's not very good, but also because Michigan State's defense is pretty legit when it comes to stopping the pass against an average passing team. I mean, obviously Ohio State's a different story for Michigan State, but they're going to be able to stop the pass against Wisconsin, I think. It's just a question of if they can consistently stop the run. I think they'll be able to for the most part, but it won't be enough. I think Wisconsin wins this one 27-13. You know what? Here's another one. Let's go to the Big 12. Texas Tech, Baylor. Baylor is 5-0 and oh, heading into Week 7. They're finally ranked number 22 in the country. They're playing Texas Tech at home, favored by 11 points. Texas Tech came off a big win last week against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is a fun team to watch, let me tell you. Chuba Hubbard, Tylen Wallace, Spencer Sanders. I talk about it every podcast. 
for the one or two of people that listen to this, I think you get it by now. Oklahoma State's a fun team to watch, and they can put up points. And Texas Tech got the the win. It was at home in Lubbock, but they were still able. It was it was it's a good win. You beat a ranked team. Texas Tech has a little bit of momentum, but now they have to travel to Waco to play a really good Baylor football team. I think Baylor's going to be too much for them in the end. I like Baylor winning this one 31 to 20, even though Texas Tech, I'd like to see them keep it close just for entertainment's sake. And I think they will, but I think at the end of this, it's going to be a, another Baylor win to move them to 6 and 0 and steadily climbing up to the top 25. Another 3:30 Eastern game. Let's go to the desert. Tempe, Arizona. Washington State, Arizona State. It's interesting. Washington State's playing Arizona State, and Washington is playing Arizona this week. Both in Arizona. So how about that? Washington State goes to number 18, Arizona State. This is probably the closest game spread that I've seen this week. Arizona State's favored by one and a half points. The game's on Pac-12 Network, so half the country, most of the country, is not going to watch this game. Which is a shame because... Oh. Washington State's got an offense that when they're clicking, it's 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 impressive. They put up points. Uh, Anthony Gordon is legit. However, against Utah last weekend, no, that was two weekends ago. They had a bye last week. Last two weeks ago in Utah, they looked horrible. Utah was getting stops every which way, and that it was a wet game. But Utah got it done. I think Arizona State at home, they have a little bit of momentum. Now they're kind of making a statement here in the Pac-12 South. They're number 18 in the country. I really like Jaden Daniels at quarterback. And then he's kind of got that dual threat to him. And then he can just dump it off anytime to Eno Benjamin, who's going to be able to break big runs. Arizona State's offense. I didn't think I'd say this three weeks ago, but I think Arizona State's offense is more explosive against good teams than Washington State's. Washington State, yeah, they scored 63 points against UCLA. They blew out other teams this year, but you saw in the game against Utah, or not Utah, when Washington State played um, Houston, like week three or whatever that was, they struggled. Houston's defense was able to get a few stops, and now that we know Houston is not that good, kind of shows Washington State can get it done against bad defenses, but I think an Arizona State defense, again, Arizona State's ha- ha- played well on defense this year. They're not top of the, you know, they're not, they're not Michigan State level defense, Cal level defense, but I think they're enough to slow down Anthony Gordon. If they can just cover up his receivers, they have no run game really, so I like Arizona State in this one by one, 28-27. I think this is a last possession kind of game or a, yeah, pretty much just a last possession kind of game. This is, it's going to be Arizona State. I just like Eno, and I like Jaden Daniels on that offense. Get another win for Herm Edwards. All right, let's go to Notre Dame. They're playing in South Bend this week against USC. Notre Dame's number nine in the country. They're favored in this one by 10.5. USC, I'm, I'm pretty sure, is still got like a third stringer in, whatever it is. They're not as good as they should be, I think. I originally had this one as a closer game, but as I kind of looked at it, Notre Dame, I think Jafar Armstrong is supposed to be back this week also, so that opens up their run game a little bit more, which in turn opens up their pass game. Ian Book is going to, hopefully, if he has the time, make good reads and make good passes. He Obviously, last week against Bowling Green, he was able to do that. But he's struggled this year when he's been under pressure and making good reads. USC will give him a test. They did it to Washington. USC did. And Washington was able to completely go away from the air and just run all over him. And I think with Jafar Armstrong back for Notre Dame, I think it's going to be a similar situation here. I like Notre Dame to win this one 34-14. USC, I don't think he's going to be able to score on this <clears throat> tough Notre Dame defense. And oppositely, 
Notre Dame's going to be able to score just as Washington did, but even better because Notre Dame is a better offense than Washington. So I like him 34-14. I've got three more games here. Washington, Arizona. We'll do this one first because it's not as big. This game doesn't start till 11 p.m. Eastern in Tucson on Fox Sports 1. That is going to be a fun Pac-12 after dark action. Washington six-point favorites after looking horrible last week at Stanford. I could not believe that performance that Washington put up. They looked slow all game. They started out with a touchdown. But, man, they could not get anything going after that. It was bad. They looked outplayed by a Stanford team that's really not that good. And I think that's really kind of the downfall for Washington. They need to have a bounce-back game. Yeah, this is another away game. Tough atmosphere, tough time at night. I guess this is like 7 their time, so not that late. But Arizona, you saw what they did with Khalil Tate last week at Colorado and Boulder. They rallied. Khalil Tate can make plays. He was the Rose Bowl Pac-12 player of the week last week. It's going to be a lot. But Washington's defense, I think, can stop this better than Colorado's defense did. And that is because Washington ha- always has a strong defense. The question is going to be the offense. Can they get drives together? Arizona is one of the worst. I think it's the second worst team in terms of both points and passing yards allowed. Hopefully that opens the door for Jacob Eason. And Washington, I have them winning a close one, 34-31. Arizona should cover the spread, if not win. It's going to be a really close game. Like I said, two dominant offenses, and Arizona's defense is just weak. All right, the two biggest games of the week, ABC and ESPN. Penn State going to Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Number 10, Penn State. Number 17, Iowa. Penn State has won the last five games against Iowa, dating back to 2012, I think. Last year, the close game, Stanley throwing an interception late right on the goal line. Year before that, Trace McSorley throwing the ball about an inch over Amani Hooker's finger for a touchdown to win the game in Kinnick Stadium. The year before that, Iowa got absolutely blown out in in, uh, State College. And the year before that, we lost. It's just been, it's just been a tough go for Iowa against Penn State. However, Kinnick Stadium is where good teams go to die. You've seen it with Ohio State, Pitt, and Pitt wasn't that good, but that was still a late game. Michigan, Penn State in two thousand eight, Penn State in two thousand ten. It's been done several times. This is an environment that will be absolutely insane. I will be at this game. I was also wearing the gold uniforms, the alternates this week. The level of hype surrounding this game, it's a night game at 7.30 Eastern on primetime ABC. I'm telling you, the hype for this game is absolutely unreal. I think Penn State is going to get the best game out of Iowa. Last week, Iowa looked absolutely terrible Stanley had his worst game of his career what a great time to have the worst game of your career dude really three picks he had like 14 yards or some it was bad he had more than 14 yards but it was a bad game there's no way that happens again two weeks in a row this game is about to be I think the best game of the week maybe with the Texas Oklahoma game I think these are going to be the two best games Iowa's going to get it done. Penn State's favored by three and a half points, but Iowa is going to win this game at home 24 to 20. It's going to be a very close game. I like a low scoring game in this one, too. Iowa, Iowa's defense is the third best scoring defense in the country. And they're getting it done. They got it done last week against Michigan. They've been getting it done all year against these teams. They have a shutout already. They're going to be able to hold Penn State to under 20, 20 points or less. And get this win at home. Iowa 24, Penn State 20. All right, now let's go to the biggest game of the week, college game day. 
of course, college game day would do another Florida game two weeks in a row. Number seven, Florida. Number five, LSU. Eight Eastern, ESPN in Baton Rouge, Tiger Stadium. LSU is 13.5 point favorites. Lost the game last year to Florida. That was at, in Gainesville. This game is this game is going to be a fun one. However, I don't think it will be as close as Penn State, Iowa, or as close as Oklahoma, Texas. I think LSU is going to make this into a shootout, and I think Florida will not be able to keep up for the duration of the game. Florida's defense is legit. Their offense, not so much. LSU's offense is legit. LSU's defense is good enough. I think that they're good enough because Kyle Trask, is, he's banged up. He's going into an absolutely ridiculous environment. Good luck The Tiger Stadium at night, prime time, top 10 matchup. Dude, it's going to be a tough game for Florida's offense. Like I said, LSU's defense is just good enough, I think, to slow down Florida's offense, who hasn't necessarily been able to score last this, a lot this year as compared to LSU, who's averaging like 60 points a game. Granted, LSU hasn't played a whole lot except Texas. But this is going to be a Joe Burrow go-off kind of game. I think he's going to, again, prove why he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country by throwing extremely effectively against a very good defense. This is going to be a Heisman moment for Joe Burrow. He's kind of already had like a continuous moment throughout the year because he's so freaking good. But I think this is a game people are going to look back on and be like, remember Joe Burrow? What was his defining moment to win the Heisman? It was this game. This is going to happen. I think he's going to throw four touchdowns. They'll get a run. It'll get Clyde Edwards Hilaire in there for a touchdown. I think they win this one 38 to 21 and cover the spread. 13 and a half point favorites kind of seemed like a lot when I first looked at it, but then I was, th- I was kind of doing some research on this and LSU is just, they just score too much. This offense is unreal, unreal. And Florida's offense won't be able to keep up. I think that Joe Burrow is going to maybe not at first, but he's going to be able to find holes as this game progresses in this Florida defense. And that's, what's going to be the difference. That's, what's going to give LSU the edge and they're going to win this game by more than 13 points more than two touchdowns this is going to be a big time lsu win at home against florida so there you go those are the top 10 games of the week again i couldn't even fit i couldn't even fit all the top games in this week because it's such a good lineup right now i'm sitting here watching nc state they just threw a pick to syracuse Let's see here. I'm checking out my fantasy team. I've got Trevor Lawrence starting, uh, Justin Herbert starting, and Joe Burrow starting. My quarterbacks are legit. I think they're all going to have great games this week. Talked about, obviously, Joe Burrow, what he's going to do. I think Justin Herbert, he had a pick last week against Cal. Finally threw his first pick, but you knew that was going to happen. He's not throwing a pick against Colorado this week. Colorado's defense is just not that good. I think Colorado, they have this, they have a solid offense. It's going to be tough for them to find points against Oregon, though. I like Herbert to throw for another four touchdowns in this baby. Trevor Lawrence talked about him. Let's do it this week. We're getting into week seven. Had the appetizer last night with a little Appalachian State. Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. Kind of a fun game towards the end. The refs pretty much gave that game to App State. They were up, well, they were up seven on fourth down or third down, something like that. Pass interference call puts them down at the ten yard line. It was a, it was pass interference, but I just don't think you can call it like that. To end the game, especially, it was a tough situation for Louisiana, but they weren't going to win that game anyway. App State getting it done on the Wednesday night action. Tonight we got NC State-Syracuse, one other game that isn't very big. Texas State, I think. Tomorrow night, Oregon-Colorado. Miami-Virginia, and then a full, big-time, packed slate on Saturday. I'll be in Iowa City for all of it. We will talk to you. 
on Sunday. We'll, we'll cover all of week seven, go over all the matchups, and we will have answers to all these games. We'll know more about every single team. We'll talk to you then. See you next time.